praise God for his wonderful blessings. What a friend we have in Jesus. It's good to know that Jesus Christ is our true friend. And he is the only friend who is available 24-7, 365 or 366. Welcome once again to another week of live stream service. We're so privileged to be in God's presence, even though we may be gathering in different places from our homes, from our workplace, wherever you are this morning or evening in some places. We thank you for encouraging us through your comments as you watch us. This is the true word of God. Greet you all once again in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's a good God and he's a true friend. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And we pray that God will continue to bless you because God has given you a heart which is so compassionate that always runs for your children. Our Father has given you so much compassion and so much love. I hear stories after stories and experiences when mothers got up early morning throughout the night, they are on their knees crying out for their children. May God continue to bless you. And fathers, you're not left behind. God has given you a heart which is strong and vibrant and keep encouraging your life partner to go strong and be a blessing. Parents are a blessing as children are a blessing to the parents. Today, uh, for a change, we're looking at a subject which is very close to my heart. And this will, we pray that in these times, as you listen to the messages to the Word of God, that God will strengthen your heart. His Word, which is the living Word of God, will give you the peace, the comfort, the strength, and all that fear and anxiety will go away from your hearts. Because these are times which are troublesome, but in the midst of that, if you know that you have a friend in Jesus, then you are safe. Then you have the comfort. Then you know that he will hear all your prayers. Then you know that he will listen to everything you want to say. Then you know that you can pour out your heart because you pour out your heart only to your friends. What a friend we have in Jesus. Turn with me, if you will, please, to John chapter 15, verses 10 through 16. I will read verse 9 also. John chapter 15, verses 9 through 16. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. When you remain in Christ, your joy will be full because you remain in Jesus Christ or God's love. Verse 12 says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. So Jesus is addressing his disciples and saying that, I am laying down my life for my friends. The verse 14 says, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You cannot be a friend if you don't listen to your friend. You may have a friend after some time if you don't follow him or if you don't listen to him or her. You're not going to be friends anymore. And in this case, Jesus Christ, God himself, who came down in human form, he was born of a virgin, lived 33 and a half years, went to the cross, died on the cross. He says, I'm laying down my life for my friends. And then he says, verse 15 is beautiful also, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. He is saying that you are no more servants. Jesus Christ is encouraging his disciples and telling them that he is a true friend. He is no more calling them servants. He is a true friend. Today there are many of us, as the, in the U.S. at least, we are opening up states and more and more offices and businesses are opening up. People are very scared and worried what is going to happen because 
we haven't overcome this virus or whatever is going on and they are more worried that it may affect them. And as the reports are pouring in, but in the midst of that, when you want to pour out your heart, when you want to sit alone and see and ask questions, who do you ask? Because everyone is in the same condition. You look up and ask God. He has called you his friends. Amen? Abraham was called a friend of God. And we sing songs after that. Moses, about Moses, God says that I have, you have not seen a man, a servant, a friend, a, a, a servant like Moses, my servant, to whom I speak as a friend to a friend. He calls us friends. And that is the beauty of knowing this word of God, that God is so gracious, even though he is the creator God, even though he is omnipotent, even though he is omnipresent, even though he is omniscience, but he is in all his glory. He is still a humble God and calls us his dear friends. So to the mothers out there, I know many times we are excited. Today you'll have a good day. Maybe you can get together with your children. Hopefully you can. If you are in the family, if your children are away, they may be calling you or whatever it is. You'll be excited and all that. But many times you may be sitting all alone. Your children have grown. Your children are married now. They have, they have their own children. And you as a mother probably are sitting all, all alone. The word of God is for you this morning, says, Jesus says, I am your true friend. You have a problem. Your heart is broken. You feel all alone. Talk to your friend. There is a hotline going to him. You can call, just dial. He's on a speed dial. He just press that button, fall on your knees. As the songwriter, the beautiful song, what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear. Not, in, not only did he bear our, our sins on the cross, but even our griefs and sorrows. He's the one who is a true friend. And at times when you don't feel, you feel alone, and when you feel that there is nothing working, working for you, when you think, because a lot of people have lost their jobs, companies have sent them home, and they are saying, right now we, don't, we will not call you. And many are worried, financially they're worried, and they're thinking, what is going to happen? I don't know what is going to happen, but I know one thing, that I have a friend that I can talk to, and he is a God of impossibilities. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. He's a true friend. He's not a friend like what we have. Our friendship in, in this world is just for, for some reason, for something, some motive mostly. It is, if you give, I will give. If you receive, I will receive. It's kind of give and take kind of thing. But Jesus is a true friend without any motive. He offered himself. He says, a true friend. I am laying down my life for my friends. He came on his own. We were seeking, we were all lost, humankind was lost, but Jesus Christ came seeking the sinners. He came down to this wretched world. You can try the level best, you can go up to mountains, you can go up to all these pilgrim places, you can hit your head on the walls, you can do whatever you want. There is no salvation. Because we cannot search salvation. So Jesus Christ came. God himself came into this world to become our dear friend, lay down his life on the cross and Give us that salvation that we freely enjoy. And it is a free gift of God today. He calls us his friend. But there is something that as a friend you have to do. It says very clearly, verse 12, John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. He is clearly calling them friends. And he is saying, I lay down my life on my own Pilate said, when he was being before crucifixion, Pilate said, don't you know that I have the authority to do this and do that? And Jesus said, you, had, you would have no authority unless my father had given it to you. Man thinks that we have everything and we have so, many, so much advancement and so much knowledge. We don't need a God. What is happening? Today there is no solution for anyone. If all that advancement and all that the studies and knowledge could give you a cure... Why aren't we coming with a button that press and people are scrambling for life? Fear of death is all around. But there is hope in the word of God. The word of God clearly says Jesus Christ came to give life and life abundant, he says. 
He is the one who gives life abundant, eternal life. So he says he came and gave his life. He calls in verse 14 says, then he says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. And the commandment is very simple. As we repeatedly say, we offer the word of God and the word of God has been given freely and we freely give the word of God out. As God speaks to us, we speak to you. And we pray that Holy Spirit, God himself will speak to each one of you as you are watching, as you are listening this morning. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. So if anyone comes to him and believes in him, believes in his commandments, and says, yes, Lord Jesus, I know that you came and I believe that you died for my sins on the cross of Calvary. I lay down my life and I accept you. I want to follow your commands. He becomes your friend. Isn't that amazing and wonderful? Many people say, well, God is so far away and God is so far and he's so busy. Many people think that because of the seven billion or more people, God is very busy. He has no time to listen to your prayers or answer. Totally wrong. God is the God of universe. He created the sun, the moon, the stars, you and me. And the word of God says God created man in his own image. He could have just made us some robot or something. He did not. He has given us a free will. Isn't it gracious? In the, the graciousness of God that he has given us the free will that we choose and decide what we need to do. But he presents life in front of us. He says life and death is in front of you. Choose life, he says. There is both the choices are there. You can choose. But he still says as a God, as a father, as a creator God, I tell you, choose life. And here he is saying, I am your friend. I, I laid down my life for my friends. And then beautifully he says, no longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. Now many are wondering, I've, even last week I was able to go somewhere and meet someone. And they said, uh, of course, keeping the social distancing and uh, giving our air hugs and all that. And they said, so what is happening? What is God saying? What is God doing? I said, He's not giving me the details, but I know the word of God says, for all things work together for good to those that love the Lord, that obey his commandments and that are called according to his purpose. So many may say, who is called? Everyone is called, right? Many are called, but a few are chosen because that is your choice. He calls everyone. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him. It is not for one single person or one single section. It is for everyone. God's love is for everyone. He is crying out and saying, as a father, I'm standing with open arms. Come to me. I love you so much that I came down to your world. I laid down my life on the cross, died for you, was buried, but I rose again triumphantly. Today that invitation is very much open. You want a friend? You will find a true friend in Jesus Christ. But you have to come to him. And there is nothing big you have to do. Many times when I was a teenager, I remember college friends who would say, what do we have to do? I, I would call them, come to church. And they would say, what do we have to do? Do we stand? Do we sit? What do we? I said, there's nothing, no formalities. Just come, relax, be in the presence of God. God will speak to you. And even today I say the same thing to my friends. Don't worry, many times they, they are worried what dress they should wear and how they should come. Now I know that different cultures, according to your customs and cultures, you can wear your dresses. But when you come to the presence of God, he's not looking for something to stand in this attitude. With the attitude, the heart attitude should be humble. That's all he asks. The heart should be humble and say, Lord, I have come into your presence. I come as I am. And there's a song that says, just as I am. I come to you, right? The sinner is saying, Lord, I just come to you. And that's what we do. We come to him and he accepts us as his friends and he calls us his friends. So mothers out there, if you're feeling lonely, if you are going through tough times, if you are going through a painful heart, if you're going through painful experiences, this word is for you this morning to encourage you to know that Jesus Christ is a true friend. Trust in him. Put all your cares upon him. You know, you want to call. Well, well, whom do you call when you are in trouble? You want to pick up the phone and call someone who is your friend. Call Jesus Christ. He's your true friend. 
You don't have to be ashamed of anything. You can open up your hearts and tell him everything. You know, sometimes even our best friends, when we share something which is so hurtful or painful or maybe our failures we are, we are afraid to mention our failures because they might make fun of us. And many times people do. But that's human nature. God is not such a God. You mention your failures. You come in your weaknesses. In your, Paul says, in my weakness, his strength is revealed. Isn't it God an amazing God? He is a true friend. Jesus called his, his disciples a friend. When the, when the Pharisees and other people asked Jesus, even there, they were saying, well, even John's disciples, they said, John's disciples, they fast. Why do your disciples not fast? This is what Jesus said. If you look, turn with me to Matthew chapter 9, verses, verse 15 says like this, And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. Repeatedly we see the word of God, that God calls us his friends. But there is one condition. We need to come as a friend to him. We need to come follow his commandment. And Jesus is very clearly saying, You are my friends. Verse 14 again I read, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. And then he says, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. He is saying the servant does not know what his master is doing. We, if you work for a big company, whatever the CEO or the directors are doing, sometimes you don't know. As a lower class employee, if you are in a bank, the tellers won't know much about the, uh, the direction of the bank, right? Unless you are a director of the firm or something. But Jesus Christ says, even though I am God, I am the creator God, I call you friends. Why? Because what I am doing, you will know. You may not, I will not give you the blueprint, but let's read what Romans chapter 8, verse 28 very clearly says. He says, this is what the word of God encourages us. And pa Pastor John spoke about this last week also. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, and we know, who knows? The friends of God know. You know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. So when He's not calling us His servants, even though we are servants, He has given us privilege to be called friends. So we need, need not know what the details are, but we know one thing, that all these things, everything that looks around, everything that hurt, seems hurtful and everything that is there, we, are, we know that our God is going to work all this evil somehow because He is a good God, He is an awesome God, He is a God of impossibilities. He will work that into something which is going to be good for each one of us. Now there is only one thing, that we need to come to Him, follow His commandments. So this is an open invitation again this morning. Come to him. Come to him and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I confess that I'm a sinner. I confess of my sins and I repent of my sins. I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. The moment you do that, he calls you his friends. Amen? Isn't that wonderful? And those of us who believe in him already know that when we go through pain, when we go through tough times, when you feel lonely, when you are sitting in your dark room, when you are sitting all alone at that night on your bed, when you wake up at four o'clock, you see that there is no hope. What am I going to do in the morning? You cry out to God. He is your true friend. He says, I have called you my friends. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. May God bless us all with these words. May God give you the strength and hope and courage. Remember that he is calling you his friends. Remember if you come to him and follow his commandments, he is your true friend. He will give you the comfort, the peace. May God bless us all. Let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for all your blessings. What a privilege to know you as a true friend. Father, we thank you for your love, your greatness, your awesomeness, your holiness. Lord, you have called us to be your friends. We thank you. We glorify your name. We praise you. We pray for all the people who are listening and watching, Lord. Bless each one, Lord. Especially we pray for all the medical staff, the first responders, those who have to go to mandatory services. Yes, even though some of the states, some of the companies are opening. Bless each one. Let that fear go away, Lord. Help us to follow you. Help us to be under your covering, Lord. 
Cover them under your blood and lead them and guide them. Those who trust in you will, shall find refuge in you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you for your living word. We thank you for giving us hope. We thank you for giving us life. We bless your name. Bless everyone, O oh God. Keep everyone safe, Lord. And help us, Lord, to know that you are a true friend. We pray for all the mothers everywhere around in this city, in this state, O oh Lord, in all the 50 states of the U.S., in all different countries, according, O oh Lord. Bless them, O oh God. Help them to know that they have a special privilege, Lord, and they are precious in your sight, oh Lord. All the mothers, let them rejoice, oh Lord. If they have anything, any, any trouble that they are going through, if they have a heartache, oh Lord, heal them in the name of Jesus. Let them know that you are their true friend. Bless them, oh Lord. We thank you once again. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen.